You're wearing a suit too. You're, you look very smart as well. Oh, thanks. Very nice. I've thanks. Had three smartly dressed men today. Very nice. Really? Yes, you're the third. <laughs> Another one was from Italy as well. I yes, think. he was great looking too. Francesco. Are you Italian? See? Hmm. Mm. So Italians. Hmm. You like mm. Italians? I do like Italians. <laughs> Which was the most challenging aspect in directing Harry Man Three? Well, there are a lot of challenges in doing a movie of this budget level. The biggest, I think, was just designing. Um, the larger set pieces. You, you get storyboards, you get animatic, animatics and uh, design specialists to come in and pre-visualize these sorts of things. But even still, there's the notion of knowing right up front that you're sitting down to create something so big as that house attack sequence, for instance. And we had models built that were about yay big. And we would take our little toys and walk around the models with him and said, what if this fell like this and, did, and he could swing over to here? And it's, it really is odd. It's a, it's a bizarre kind of uh, like playing with child's toys, but it, on such a, a scale, because then you're gonna pay millions and millions of dollars to realize it. Behind a great man, there's always a great woman. And True. what a woman, may I say, beautiful, <laughs> loyal, uh, smart. I think she has many qualities. She's the most patient woman I've seen in years on screen. Yeah, she's very patient. She's very loving, and I think, I think she understands who Tony Stark is, and she's supportive of that. And you know, it, he, she knows he's difficult and complicated, but you know, she knows that he has a purpose in the world, a greater purpose, and she wants to support that. I think it's a bit tough living together with a, a superhero. Yes, I think it's tough for her. Um, the suit in this movie becomes really its own character and sort of representative of his obsession. And I think, you know, it's not that she's against the suit, but she's worried that he's sort of going into this obsessive darkness and, you know, that he doesn't seem like he's doing very well. The Mandarin is a bit different from what we could expect reading the, the comic books. Yeah, it is. I think in the comic books, from what I gather, because I was, I didn't really, uh, it's not really part of my growing up and my culture. I was more into the British comics, but from what I see from the material that, um, that I was sent, uh, that he is, um, there's more physical violence uh, in, his, in, in his character. And for my character, for my Mandarin, he's more mental, intellectual manipulation, using language and political language and icons that he will turn upside down, treasured Western icons that he will pick out and just destroy before your very eyes. You know that lots of people is, is still not sure whether you wear, you really wear the, the armor or, the, or it's just a special effect. So you really wear it. It's both, it's all. It's you both. Know, we do a motion capture version of it where we have you know the dots all over us and, and even on our faces they put white dots and we do it. That's how we're computer generated and sometimes it's just the, the helmet, sometimes it's the entire suit. So it's, it's many different ways that, that the, the effect is created. And how's the feeling with the suit on? It sucks. It sucks? Yeah. <laughs> Why it sucks? Because it's, like it's like you wearing me on your back. It's really heavy and really, uh, uh, the, the, the suit is, doesn't articulate all the way. You can't touch your face, you can't take care of yourself. So if something happened and there were a disaster and everybody ran out, I'm definitely gonna die in the thing. Do you like to play characters with sinister intentions? Uh, well, I've, I love to play characters with intentions. And some of my characters have had uh, you know, very high motives and wonderful intentions. So what I have to find in the character is that intention. Um, and once I've found it, it unlocks something and it makes the character enjoyable and playable. And also, you're hoping to communicate something to an audience, so um, as long as I can find the intention. And none of the characters I've played, perhaps, have been 100% good mm -hmm. or 100% bad. Of course, they will be flat. Yeah, that's right. You have to, you have to color them in and find that wonderful variety and movement in, inside them, uh, as I tried to with the with the Mandarin. And talking about living together with a superhero, we already mentioned this, but living together with a, a Hollywood star, a music star, mm -hmm. it's, they have uh, sort of the same superhero lifestyle, like <laughs> they always travel somewhere, they're surrounded by fans, they're away from home. Yeah, that's true. But you seem to have found a good balance. Yeah, I mean, so far we seem to have, he, you know, I think, 
I think it helps that we both understand what the other does and we're, we try to be very supportive of each other. So um, I think, and, I, and again, like, like Pepper, I'm, I'm understanding of who he is in the world and I think my husband's art is really important and beautiful, so I want to support that.